Welcome to another business oriented episode of the Professional Plumber Podcast. My name is Willem Klopper, I'm your host. And in this episode, we're going to be discussing the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, the purpose that it serves, as well as some of the key provisions that are in the Act. Now, joining me for this conversation is Mr. Louis Ackerman. Louis is one of the directors at Intelligent Labor Solutions. Is that correct, Louis? That's correct, William. Yes. Thanks for having me. Really yeah. excited to have a chat with you guys today. Welcome. Looking Welcome. Forward to it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Louis, there's a lot that can be said about the Basic Conditions of Employment Act itself, as well as the rights and the responsibilities of both employers and employees. Yeah. But before we go into the details of our conversation, Louis, and to our listeners and our viewers out there, out there, let's just quickly cross to a quick ad break. Don't go away. Stay tuned because Louis and I will be right back after this. Are you having questions about the Plumbing Industry Registration Board and the Plumbing Industry in South Africa? Well, then join us on the couch and in conversation with the industry experts to answer all your lingering questions about the plumbing industry. The PIRB remains committed to ensuring open and consistent communication within the plumbing industry. So, be part of the conversation. Send us your questions on email at communications at prrb.co.za or on WhatsApp on 079-833-6930. Become a part of the conversation today. Hashtag on the couch. Hashtag PIRB. Welcome back. You're still tuned into a lack of business orientated episode of the Professional Plumber Podcast where myself and my guest, Mr. Louis Ackerman of Intelligent Labor Solutions are going to discuss the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Um, you know, the purpose of the Act, Louis, the, the, some of the key yeah. uh, provisions that are, are within the Act, as well as some of the, the rights and the responsibilities of both employers and employees. Sure. Louis, just for the sake of our viewers and our listeners out there, yeah. can you just give us a quick background of yourself? Yeah, please? sure. Uh, like I said, my name is Louis Ackerman. I am one of the directors of Intelligent Labor Solutions. It's a family-run business. I work with my dad. He's been doing this since the late 80s. And uh, I've been one of those weird kids that always has just been lucky enough to know exactly what I wanted to do since I uh, was a little boy and I've always wanted to get into the law side of things. Um, it must be, I think, because I'm a, I'm a little brother um, and I enjoyed arguing with my sister over everything. And uh, yeah, so uh, I've always been lucky enough to know this is the, the field I want to go into. I've um, been doing it now this year for 20 years um, and it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> It, 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 is, it does get quite technical, that's what we're going to discuss today, uh, especially when you get to the Basic Conditions of Employment Act and the Labor mm -hmm. Relations Act. But yeah, hopefully after this show, uh, your listeners and viewers will have a little bit more understanding about everything and mm -hmm. be a, everything will be a little bit more clear yeah. as far as it can be. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I know that quite a few of our listeners and viewers have a lot of questions yeah. about the Act and especially about their rights yeah. and, and their responsibilities as yeah. either employers or employees. employees. Yeah. Louis, but just off air, before we started recording, mm -hmm. you mentioned to me that you also, you, you did study uh, I law studied law, uh, was fortunate enough to go to Stellenbosch, um, a lot of fun had there, um, studied law and then started working with my dad, going through a lot of work with the CCMA, a lot of work with uh, other um, uh, councils, um, working with the Allied Business Association, mm. uh, we're members of theirs too. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what we've been doing. Mm. Louis, my first question to you is, sure. what is an act? What, what is an act? Is it, is, is it a law? What is it? So uh, this is the, the, hopefully the only part where I'll have to read something for you because it gets quite <laughs> technical. But uh, the, the legal definition of an act is, an act refers to a piece of legislation enacted by the country's parliament. An act serves as the primary source of law in the country, setting out rules and regulations that covers various aspects of life and commerce. And um, an act can be introduced by government, ministers or members of parliament must go through a process of debate, voting and amendment before becoming a law. And an act covers a wide range of topics. Now, the basic what it comes down to is the act is what the, what the rules say how you're supposed to play the game. Mm. 
um, we can, like I said, it gets very technical. Um, and please don't ask me how you uh, enact an act. That, that gets quite technical as well. But what it comes down to is an act says what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. Okay. So it's basically that. Yeah. Right. So now, now it boils down to this conversation that we're having today, which is about the, the Basic Conditions of Employment yes. Act. Yes. What is the purpose of this specific act? I mean, so, it refers to employment, yes. but, it, but it, it's applicable to both employees yeah. as well as employers. Yes. So what it basically says is what your rights are as an employee and how you are supposed to manage your employees according to the law. Um, it just tells you what you're allowed to do. You get to, you get to working hours, working conditions, health and safety, stuff like that. That is all... Uh, in the act it tells you exactly what you're supposed to do in the act what your legal requirements are um, a lot of people think that if i don't have a contract i can do with my employee as i wish mm. and then the basic conditions of employment actually kicks in and it and it that protects the employees very very well um, a lot of people also come to us and they tell us yes but we're so frustrated with with the ccma or the bargaining councils because they are forcing us to do certain things that are making it impossible for us to run a business what i usually tell people there is if you follow the rules, then you should be fine. Mm. But you have to follow the rules from the start. Mm. That, that's the main thing. It, it's very, it gets very, very difficult and um, the waters get quite muddy if you want to start doing stuff after four or five years of employment. Mm. Um, a lot of people also tell us, oh, but we'll wait until there's a problem. <laughs> I understand that. It's, it's um, usually like that. That is usually the problem. <laughs> um, I sometimes feel like I sell insurance because I tell a lot of people, yeah, we've got to get these things sorted out now so your contracts are correct, your disciplinary codes are correct. Everything is correct in a sense that if a guy walks into your business and you decide to employ him, that he knows exactly what the rules are that you're following. Mm. Because if that is not the case, it, I mean, it's like playing a game of rugby and you're not sure what, what the rules are. I yeah. mean, except if Wayne Barnes is refing, then they make up their own rules. <laughs> but other than that, you know, everybody knows there's four lines, you play between the four lines, and that is mainly what the basic conditions of employment does. All right, so looking at the, at the, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act itself, and you've just explained to us what its purpose is, what purpose it serves, what are some of the key provisions within the Act? Sure. Um, top of my head, I would say the working hours, um, in the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, it says that you are required to work 45 hours a, work, uh, a week maximum. Mm -hmm. um, but then you get different sectors, like the metal engineering sector. Um, they, every sector, every council has a sectoral determination. And in that sectoral, sectoral determination, that is where they negotiate it with employees, uh, unions and stuff like that, to say, but what is the best for the employees? Mm -hmm. And in the Metal Engineering Bargaining Council, the minimum or the maximum working hours are 40, week, 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. But then you also get stuff like leave entitlements. Um, a new one in our law uh, lately is paternity leave, mm -hmm. which means that it's just not maternity leave, yes. um, where the father of the child now also gets time off when sure. the child is born. Um, you also get, uh, they also govern wage deductions, termination of employment. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are unsure about how you dismiss an employee, how you terminate mm -hmm. employment. Uh, discrimination and harassment, and then of course health and safety. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's more or less what the what the Basic Conditions of Employment Act covers. Just quick before we go into an ad break, sure. um, Louis, I wanted to say to you that you know when it comes to being an employee mm -hmm. and, and accepting a work contract that is given to you by your employer, one would think to yourself, okay, well if this if this company or this organization expects me to work so many hours per day and it's written in my contract, then that is it. You know, if they if they say I work sixty hours mm -hmm. a week. And that's it. And that's my working hours, and I signed the contract, yeah. and I just accept it as it is. If they say you are you are not allowed to take paternity leave, whereas the the act, the basic conditions yeah, the of employment says, act, or the law says that mm. you are allowed to take it. So it's good to hear yeah. that you know these these things are these uh, provisions are made for. There are specific things yeah. said about it, yeah. which the employer should make provision for in their contracts, in exactly. their policies and yeah. those kind of things. And that's where the importance comes in for people to know about it, whether they be employers, because yeah. I'm sure, and the employee themselves. Mm -hmm. So just after the ad break, Louis, we're going to go into a quick ad break to our listeners and our viewers as well. Just after the ad break, I'm going to shoot my question to Louis about the importance of why people should familiarize themselves with the content of the act. For our viewers and our listeners out there, don't go away. Do stay tuned because Louis and I will be right back after this.
Welcome back to this business orientated episode of the Professional Plumber Podcast in which myself and Louis Ackerman of Intelligent Labor Solutions are busy discussing the basic conditions in, well, basic conditions of employment act Louis the the purpose there of some of the key provisions um, just before we went into the ad break we we discussed some of the key provisions yeah. that are within you know that they can expect to yeah. get in the act um, but I also did mention just before we went into yeah. the the ad break I mentioned that you know it, it certainly sounds to me as if it is important for both parties to understand and familiarize themselves with the content yeah. of the act. Yeah. Um, why would you say that it is important for specifically employers to familiarize themselves with the act? And and are there any other, I mean, except for the basic conditions of employment act itself, mm. are there any are there other laws or acts that they can reference to when it comes to you know, running their company and making rules and regulations and setting up policies and those kind of things within yeah. their companies. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as we said, what it comes down to is the basic conditions of employment act is the rules. Mm. That is how the, the government expects you to play the game. Now, the reason it's important is so that you understand what your rights are. Mm. You know, a lot of people don't understand the fact that I have a right to the amount of hours I work that um, I have a right to a contract, I have a right to maternity leave, paternity leave, sick leave days. A lot of people don't understand exactly how sick leave works. Um, and that is why you need to have a basic conditions of employment act. If you don't at least know those provisions, at least to have one ready. Mm -hmm. um, something that's very nice to have, especially for an employer. Um, and if there's an employee out there who wants to learn more about this as well, it's very important. Um, Utah, yeah, they get these little pocket guides mm -hmm. that is, is the, um, that's the complete basic conditions of employment act. Um, and it's a nice thing they have with you. You know, you keep it in a drawer if somebody comes in and, and demands certain things. <laughs> it's nice to have something to say, listen, but show me in the act where it says that. Um, we are also governed by the Labor Relations Act. Um, Utah also makes a nice little one of those. Um, but at the end of the day, what these acts do is, like I said earlier on, they just tell you exactly what is expected of you as an employer and as an employee. It, it shows you what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it, when, where, and why. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just we've just found in, in the years that we've been doing this, if you follow these rules, not just are you, I would never say you're 100% covered because that's impossible, mm -hmm. but the, the peace of mind that you have as an employer but the peace of mind that you give your employee. Yes. Because what I, what we found is a lot of employers, they they forget that this is a guy that usually comes in, he's working on minimum wage, um, he just wants a job. Mm. You know, if you put a contract in front of him, 90% of people are gonna sign it. Um, and you have to be able to give that guy peace of mind because if a guy is comfortable with his contract, if he understands that yes. contract, he's gonna to come to work, he's gonna do exactly what you mm. need him to do. Yes, you're gonna get guys who are funny and make life a little bit mm. difficult, but then you have that, the, the law protects you as an employer just as much as it does an employee. Mm. And that peace of mind you give a guy, he's gonna be a decent employee, He's going to do his job. He's going to make you money. You're going to be. Able, he's going to make himself some money because at the end of the day, that's what he's there for. Because also, you're giving as an employer. I would. I would say that you're giving peace of mind to your employee. Yeah. Because your employee knows that now, when you set certain rules and yeah. regulations within your organization, certain expectations yeah. that you put in your policies, mm -hmm. you know, your employment contract yeah. for that matter. Um, you know, like working hours and, yeah. and the number of leave days they have available to them, mm -hmm. when they can take it or not, yeah. can they, they take it, then at least that employee, when you as an employer put that contract to them and, and, and discuss the policies of the company with them, that employee will then know mm -hmm. that this employer has done it and set all of these things up according to and compliant to yeah. the law. Yeah the basic conditions of employment act and the labor relations yeah. act and yeah. those kind of things yeah. so they're not taking me for a ride exactly. my my employer is not taking for yeah. my, my, me for a ride yeah. and then also like you said to be covered yeah. as an employer you also have rights and responsibilities mm -hmm. louis all right so now now that we know why it's important for em employers to familiarize themselves with mm -hmm. with the act and with other acts and other laws as well mm -hmm. um, Let's have a look at why it's important for employees 
And because this is now from the other the other yeah. side. This is yeah. from the other perspective. Yeah. Um, so why is it important for them to familiarize themselves with the act? Because at the end of the day, it comes down to you have to know what your rights are, especially in the workplace. Mm. Um, you have to be aware and you have to be comfortable to know that what is expected of me. Mm. So that if somebody does some, uh, if an employer does something that is um, unacceptable, um, for instance, they call you into the office, they say, listen, we don't require your services anymore, you can pack up and go. Mm. Then you're supposed to know, but listen, you have to have a disciplinary hearing. You mm. have to, there's some form of disciplinary function or mm. disciplinary action that needs to take place before you can just say, there you go. Yeah. And, and if, that's if, what, if, that, if that was the case of, you know, having done, if that's a, a punitive measure yeah. by, by letting them go and terminating contract like Definitely. that, then they should know that, you know, that a certain disciplinary yes. acts. But if it's a matter of, all right, now, so we, we don't need you anymore, not because you've done something wrong, yeah. then certainly there's another process. Definitely. There's at least a notice period Definitely. or something. Yeah. And employees should know about it. Exactly. They should know that there yeah. must be a notice period or something Definitely. like that. I mean, if, if your employer comes in and says, listen, we're going to end your services because we are retrenching you or we are downsizing mm. you, then you can also go into the act and see. But what are the requirements that my employer has to fulfill to make sure that they do exactly what they're supposed to do, yeah. exactly what the law requires? Yeah. yeah. It was interesting. I want to get quickly back to because we are drawing to a close of this episode. But just before we get there, there's something that I wanted to revisit. And that's something like the, the working hours, for example. Mm -hmm. It was interesting how you explained that the law, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, makes provision for different industries mm -hmm. or different trades, as you call it. Yeah. I mean, we, we, our main, you know, our, our listeners, our audience out there, listeners and viewers are, are plumbers yeah. and people within the plumbing industry. Yeah. You know, so plumbers can, can work, they can be on standby throughout the evening hours. Mm -hmm. And so when their contracts are set up, it's interesting to know that they should be aware of yeah. what the act says, yeah. how many hours yeah. must or maximum is there per, per week, yeah. and how that is then calculated into the shifts, if they yes. work in shifts, evening great, shifts, yeah. standby shifts, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, because sometimes, you know, they work an eight hour day, but then they're on standby yeah. at night as well. And when they go out, you know, what does the law, what does the, the Basic Conditions of Employment Definitely. Act say about that? So the Basic Conditions of Employment Act also makes provisions for the fact that it says there's a certain amount of time that needs to pass from one shift to the next shift. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if it says anything or specifically to the plumbing industry, but that is there should then be a sectoral determination mm. towards the plumbing industry. And that's what a sectoral determination's power is, where you see that, listen, we work eight hour shifts or 12 hour shifts, but then it's, uh, we still need to go on um, standby. It'll then make provision for that. Mm. Um, but the basic conditions of employment act shows exactly what the law requires of you and then the sectoral determinations come in and say yeah but where can we have some wiggle room where can we um, negotiate some some wiggle room for that to make sure that our sector can keep on performing the way it's supposed to perform mm. yeah louis we are running out of time for sure. this specific episode <laughs> so what i want to leave the audience our listeners and viewers out there with is from my perspective um, you know certainly um, you don't have to be an attorney mm to understand what these laws and these acts say and yeah. what is what the provisions that it make or, or refers to in there. Yeah. Um, there are little booklets, like you said, yes. of what was that? Utah, um, they call them pocket guides. I pocket believe. guides. Yeah. Um, and you get a little set, I think there's seven of them. It's, very, it's a very handy thing to yeah. have at you. Yeah. And, and, and I assume that it's also broken down in, uh, can I call it layman's terms or easier terms for them to understand? Or The, the nice thing about the Utah books is it's, it's the, it, the act is written in there as it is, has mm. been passed by parliament. But if you see something in there and you say, listen, but I'm unsure about a specific part of it, um, to go online. Mm. There's a lot of resources online where they will then explain it to you okay. in layman's terms so you can understand it a little bit easier. But it's a good thing to have just to know that, listen, if it says I'm supposed to work X amount of hours, I'm supposed to work X a amount of hours, reference. just as a, yeah, as a quick a reference. reference. Yeah. What I want to leave our audience with is, um, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to, <laughs> to have any last words sure, or thanks. statements to our audience as well. But from my side, I want to say to our listeners and our viewers out there, just remember that both employer and employee have got rights and responsibilities. Um, it's not just the employee that yeah, has rights. Definitely. The employer also has rights. Definitely. Yeah. And though that's why it's so important for both 
both spheres to familiarize themselves yeah. with the laws, with the rules and the regulations exactly. of the game. Yeah. We call them acts. Yeah. This one is now the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. And, and it's just important for them to, to know that both parties have rights yeah. and responsibilities. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and familiarize, guys, just go and familiarize yourself with the content. Exactly. Louis, from your side, any last words, any last statements? Uh, no, I think uh, you've covered everything. I appreciate that. <laughs> and um, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, if you know your rights, if you know how to play the game, it's going to make the game a lot more fun. It's going to make the, the game a lot more safe. And um, take responsibility for yourself. Mm. You know, find out stuff. Don't be afraid to, to do some research, read about it. And uh, if you have any questions, just ask. Louis, Intelligent Labor Solutions. Yeah. Where can our listeners and our viewers, should they want to make contact cool. with you and make yeah. use of your services, where can they get a hold of you? Do you have a website? Do we you have do an have, email address? We contact do have a number? website. Um, our website's called laborsoul.co.za. Um, we also have, we're also on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, intelligent, and I've got to remember, intelligent underscore labor underscore solutions, I believe okay. it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's quite a long word. <laughs> um, and then uh, if they want to email us, um, we can, the, the, the email address is info at laborsoul.co.za, um, but we can give it to you guys and you can uh, perhaps put it under. Yeah, sure, they can always, always contact the yeah. PRB and Yeah, and if they have well. any questions, more than welcome to contact us. Contact uh, telephone numbers and everything. Everything's on the there. website. Uh, we usually work it with uh, with the email. It's the easiest way, mm. and uh, we like leaving a paper trail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make sure all, yeah, all pun intended. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Just that website again. That's www.labor labor soul. That's yeah. S O L. Yes, labor soul. Yeah. yeah. .co. Co. That's great. Louis, once again, thanks a stack for your time, for Big your pleasure. effort, and for the valuable information that you've shared with our audience. Sure. Um, I do believe that, you know, and I would actually encourage them, our listeners and our viewers, I would encourage you that if you have, you know, questions regarding any of these acts, please do make contact with Intelligent Labor Solutions. Um, we did share the, the website address with you. Um, and then that concludes our conversation, Louis. Awesome. We've run out of time for this episode. <laughs> but to our listeners and our viewers, don't go away yet because we are going to cross over to some interesting industry related news or not news announcements we'll see you in the next one the PIRB's roadshow is well underway if you are based in Pumalanga be sure to come and interact with us on the 3rd of May at House of Plumbing in Mbombela on the 4th of May, we will be joining the Plumbing Travelling Exhibition at Steelcrest High School in Middleburg. We look forward to seeing you there. There are only three months left before our annual Champions for Charity event takes place and tickets are selling fast. You could also become a sponsor of this fantastic event. To find out how to become one of the sponsors or to buy your tickets for the event, visit www.championsforcharity.co.za. Show heart and become part of this awesome charity initiative. Let's make a difference. And lastly, remember that you can book advertising space on any of the PIRB's video productions. To find out how, send us an email to marketing at pirb.co.za or call us at 0861-747-275.